Well, as we hear more and more stories of smart machines, there are worries that they are threatening human jobs. But a recent survey shows the majority of people are embracing artificial intelligence. 63% of people surveyed agree AI will help solve complex problems that plague our society, while only 23% believe it will have serious negative implications. And among the major issues, 66% of the respondents believe AI will provide solutions to cancer and other diseases. 56% think it will spur economic growth. Also, more than half of the respondents believe AI will help boost clean energy, education, cybersecurity, and privacy. Now for more on this topic, we're joined by Peter Shing, founder of Transhumanist Australia. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How are you? Good, thank you. So start by telling us about some of the latest advancements you're seeing both in China and beyond when it comes to AI. Well, we just heard again that uh, AlphaGo has beaten the world champion and uh, that was only expected to come in maybe in the next decade or so. So this is really unprecedented time that we live in. Right now, we're actually really seeing the advancements of that exponential curve in developments in artificial intelligence. And the big tech companies are behind it. You see Google investing heavily around the acquisitions of DeepMind a couple of years ago with $500 million investments. And all the other big tech companies are going to be going in here. And what's going to be really interesting is to seeing how we can merge with that intelligence over time. Now, we're still essentially just scratching the surface when it comes to AI's applications. But how is it primarily being used at the moment? Well, right now you're looking at big companies that really try to make things more efficient in their day-to-day -day jobs. So they're, they're all going through streamlining processes, adopting things called robotic process automation, essentially repeatable tasks that might be applying rules-based uh, sort of rules uh, processes to their companies. But now you're going to see then that adoption of more sort of human-level cognitive applications. So rather than if, then, else, it'll be going to looking at a spectrum of probabilities. So you might be 80% confident to make a decision, and the machine will just essentially make that decision anyway. And that's kind of how the human brain works as well. Rather than making complete black and white things, we make the decisions that have the best probable outcomes. Now, of course, a lot of these companies looking at what this means for their bottom line. So what kind of resources and investments are really being poured into AI at the moment? Right now, you're seeing applications across a spectrum of the artificial intelligence space. So natural language processing, understanding of the written words, speech recognition, which is understanding the voice of everyone, as well as image recognition. So the most disruptive immediately is probably going to be the driverless car industry. So I think it accounts for a vast majority of jobs in America where truck drivers and other drivers and buses and taxis and Uber drivers are going to be seeing that disruption coming in the next five years. And as you see regulation being disrupted as well, Uber and coming in doing things that uh, really doesn't require regulatory change, uh, they're going to essentially displace a lot of these jobs over the next time. We're going to see initially as well as uh, pattern recognition applying in the medical space. So radiologists looking at MRI scans and CT scans, those sort of pattern recognition tasks are the best done by computers. And they're going to see uh, essentially an augmentation of that role in radiology initially. And then you're going to see that displacement over time. Now, Peter, since it is still early days for this technology, is it too much of a gamble to put such large investments in this technology right now? Well, you just saw SoftBank you know, closing their $100 billion vision fund, and they've raised $93 billion in that first round. So I think the competition is vast. Around 2012, you've seen that uh, exponential scale of investment. Now, obviously, there's the Gardner hype cycle tells us that emerging technologies have that peak of the hype. And I think machine intelligence is up there. But you're going to see with these investments, it's going to adopt the industry innovation in that space. So slowly, you'll see that plateau as well as that productivity side uh, coming through. And uh, we saw that uh, initial uh, announcement by IBM and Watson and their sort of pivot of their entire business towards that industry. And uh, you're going to see that uh, applied over, uh, over, over time and actually achieving the results that we need. Now, people whose jobs could essentially be made obsolete by, by AI, they might be asking, where does that leave us? So what about the role of human intelligence in this AI push? That's right. So essentially, any sort of repeatable tasks that you do, initially it was only the physical repeatable tasks that were automated by machinery. Now it's the cognitive repeatable tasks. So you're going to see over time that as more and more that human intelligence role is taken over by machines, there eventually might actually be a useless class. And that's why we're seeing this sort of rise of Brexit and Trumpism across all of the world. Um, even in Australia, we're seeing a rise of nationalism because there's just this displacement. 
as a as the net job transfer comes from you know the machines um, essentially being able to take over those physical as well as mental tasks. Um, what you're going to see around the disruption around people, well, are they going to be asking for, say, a universal basic income, where if the robots is actually producing all the sort of things that you need, that will reduce the price of uh, the, you know, the commoditization of everything we have, as well as products and services. So will that basic income be able to allow us to consume all the things that we do need? But that's going to be a tough, tough challenge for governments around the world. Right. And that's why I think Transhuman Australia is promoting the merging of humans and technology so that we can actually stay competitive over time with the intelligence. You see companies like Elon Musk's uh, Neuralink, as well as Facebook's uh, recently at the F8 conference, talking about a brain-to-computer interface, where essentially we have our reptilian brains, our mammalian brains, as well as neocortex. We want an additional layer to connect with that superintelligence. That is what the AI will be. So that is the long-term trajectory, and we think humans will adopt more and more of that technology. And essentially, we're almost like cyborgs looking at our smartphones every day. If we don't know the answer to a question, we just Google it. So that interface right. is essentially the manual uh, interaction. But if we embed that technology within our cognitive space around our neural lace, is that what Elon is saying? Right. Then that might actually enhance ourselves to a point of superintelligence. Well, uh, judging by a lot of the films that have cyborgs, it doesn't usually end too well for us. But we'll have to leave <laughs> it there. Peter Shing, founder of Transhumanist Australia.